Hype Beast and Hype Radio. I am Jeff Staple, and this is The Business of Hype, a show about creative entrepreneurs, brand builders, innovators, and the realities behind the dreams they've built. Today's episode is brought to you by my good friends at New Balance. They just dropped the latest evolution to the classic 997 franchise. It's simply called the 997H. It's an instant classic in my opinion. And my favorite colorway? Probably the Magnet Energy Red, but it's pretty hard to choose. It drops this month and it's available in dope colorways all over the world at better New Balance retailers. And much like what we do here at The Business of Hype, New Balance is all about supporting the fearlessly independent. So whether it's the athletes they serve or the creatives that they collaborated with, like me, New Balance has been celebrating entrepreneurship since 1906. You can learn more at newbalance.com. When you're at an event and you see the photographer, don't disregard them. Yes, get that picture, but don't forget that they're more than a person with just a camera. They are the documenter, the vibe setter, the person who will capture the essence of how everyone is feeling right in that shot. So on this episode of The Business of Hype, I talk with David Pruding, a longtime photographer who's had the opportunity to rub shoulders with some of the biggest celebrities, but more importantly, capture some of their great moments out. From his early start as an assistant to working under the legendary photographer Patrick McMullen, and now being the co-founder of the widely respected BFA, we hear what it really takes to grind to make your vision come to life. What's amazing is not only the work that he's done, but the growth that he's been able to recognize for himself and also instill in other photographers. Hey, thanks for having me. My name is David Pruding. I'm a partner and co-founder of the photography agency BFA, BFA BFA.com. Okay. Yeah. Based here in New York and LA. Yeah. Better known as a photographer. And what does BFA.com do for those who don't know? BFA.com is a a service-based photography multimedia business um, that focuses on client kind of documentary or storytelling of events or product launches or charity events or art openings or culture in general, Mm -hmm. things that are relative to the media. And it started in 2010. We have three other business partners and um, Billy Farrell, Neil Rasmus, Joe Shieldhorn, myself all came from Patrick McMullen. Okay. We were working for Patrick. yeah. Yeah. Patrick McMullen was uh, the first, I'd say, social photographer. Mm. He made a business out yeah. of it. I think Warhol was kind of the guy who... Pre-technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the interview magazine back page, you know, was legendary. Um, kind of intuition through Andy to document all people, not just famous people yeah. at events. Like right. Somebody, somebody. They're mm-hmm. going to be somebody. Like 15 yeah. minutes of fame kind right, of idea. Right. And, uh, you know, also it's interesting to know who these writers are, the artists, or Patrick would always like take the photo of the model or the the guy serving the drinks at the oh, party because uh-huh. you, you may be somebody. Right, right. And I think like Brad Pitt started off like as a guy you know, uh-huh. serving chicken or something outside of the <laughs> restaurant, right? You never know. So it was, Does your uh, business like focus on a particular genre or subset of culture yeah fashion art music okay entertainment primarily some philanthropic kind of Mm -hmm. um charity kind of work as well yeah just bringing attention to good causes as well as you know the business of hype yeah (laughs) (laughs) no pun intended Uh, yeah but it started really patrick's focus business was in fashion Mm mm-hmm and, um, you know, like I had that background in fashion photography when I first moved to New York. I was assisting fashion photographers at American Associates. And I worked, you know, with some incredible, talented guys and learned a ton about the fashion business, kind of more editorial and commercial kind of campaign side of the business. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I knew kind of early on that I wasn't going to be a fashion photographer. Why is that? Uh, I have like more of a photojournalistic kind of spirit yeah. of photography, kind of like more natural lifestyle, like in the moment. I always found myself performing better in undirected, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, Repertage kind of like, yeah. 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 Just being there, present mm-hmm. kind of moment, let the story kind of unfold. Yeah. Just be there. Participant observer, I call myself. Okay. Like that term. Versus like a whole setup, like yeah. studio, yeah, it's hair pretty makeup, intimidating. catering. Like you watch all these moving parts. And, and then you go up. Photographer is more like... or less the director, right? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, kind of coordinating the vibe and also like making sure all the elements are working. Stylist, hair, makeup, yeah. Yeah. art director, creative director, client. Right. There's a lot of elements to it. Right. Assistants. I was an assistant and eventually became like a manager for one of the guys and... I was inspired by those guys. They were true artists, and um, but you knew that that wasn't. I knew it wasn't going to be me. Yeah. Uh, So I had this little nudge to like, I need money too. I was working for these guys for free. I was just grinding. Uh I would get paid on a shoot once in a while, but Mm -hmm. I started managing one of them. This guy named Diego Fuga. It's kind of long and lost, but was one of the most talented guys I've ever been around. True artist, and uh, man, I was amazed by these guys could do with like a little budget Mm -hmm. like 10 grand make 10 grand look like a hundred thousand yeah it's far out so i had great experience working and i just ate it up i wanted to learn as much as i could even though i knew it wasn't for me Mm -hmm. but i was like this is the business of photography yep i'm gonna make a living doing this i gotta understand all these elements yeah um and working in a management role is kind of like the conduit between the client photographer the model the production you know producers and Mm -hmm. we got to like know what everyone needed yeah from each other so it was cool to work in that kind of team environment and i liked that right and i didn't necessarily think that being uh, by myself was going to be easy as a photographer and i wanted to be a photojournalist and kind of struck out early an opportunity to go to war yeah i was telling you before i was like not going to iraq (laughs) to be a war to be a photojournalist at war. yeah because i had like all the Kind of photography i'd started to gravitate towards after doing some travel photography myself was you know war photographers guys like james nackway these guys were creating really profound imagery mm-hmm. that was important yep you know that that can change done, like the that course change yeah. the course of history yep. you know because you know you had like the first commercial kind of images of war in vietnam that essentially created revolution Mm -hmm. so i always found that interesting yeah um but it was tough i couldn't get a gig doing it Mm -hmm. i was always hustling different gigs on top of kind of working as an intern essentially yeah for a couple of years yeah and you were saying before that like sort of in the fashion photography world there's like different levels of assisting there's like the first assistant second third fourth assistant (laughs) yeah i was always in in terms of assisting i was like kind of bottom of the rung (laughs) <laughs> but I had a good way with people. So I yeah. ended up, this one photographer started to trust me to be kind of like his voice. He was Italian, didn't speak the, the language that well. Mm-hmm. So I'd always like be his kind of voice. Yeah. Um, and but I had a good like, energy just to like make sure things were getting done. Right. But the assistants all kind of like joked at me. They knew I didn't know much. I could barely put together the light stand, you know, and <laughs> set up a light. Um, so I knew that like this side of photography, that technical side, it was never going to be me, uh-huh. but, um, I enjoyed it immensely. Um, and I'm grateful for that experience and it definitely helped me do what I do now, yeah. which is kind of a combination of fashion photography or portrait photographer, as well as that photojournalistic side of me that comes out to my work. Mm-hmm. Which I'm proud of now. But looking back, these Patrick McMullen days, I got the gig with Patrick just because I needed work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a friend of the family, Susan McGreeno, was like a PR lady for um, Martha Stewart at the time. She's like, oh, go work for Patrick. And <laughs> I guess I made the like grade, it kind of be like a good looking guy, helped or whatever. <laughs> I don't even think he looked at my portfolio. I was just He's like, like, you're hot. Oh, you're a good boy. <laughs> um, but Billy was there, the longest kind of tenured photographer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, me and Billy gravitated towards each other pretty early because I knew he knew how to do this job well. Yeah. And I cared about doing anything I was doing with photography well. It's mm-hmm. like, here's an opportunity to take pictures and make money. Yeah. Um, the money wasn't good at the time, but it was 
work yeah, as right. a photographer. So yeah. I was like, this is great. Yeah. And I was in these cool parties and mm-hmm. events. And I had this, you know, kind of way of shooting and Billy had a way of shooting and he kind of, we blended our kind of skills together and we kind of created a, a style okay. that Patrick was like not really receptive to at the time. Uh-huh. We were putting like black and white photos on the website and yeah. kind of doing things differently and pushing each other. Like mm-hmm. we used to grind and Joe and Neil as well. Like we really cared about our work. All four of you were there together at yeah, one point? at the same time. Okay. I got there like end of 2006 and they had been there longer than that. And um, yeah, we just saw like a need, like a white space for quality and mm-hmm. event photography. Mm-hmm. And I loved the kind of camaraderie we had of yeah. being in this basement, you know, office and on 14th Street and we were just hungry. Mm-hmm. Literally, like we were, we didn't, couldn't afford food. <laughs> so we're drinking pizza and beer uh-huh. and just, we would edit photos until seven or eight in the morning, yeah. like on a nightly basis. Right. And we had great clients and that's why I think we cared because Patrick had like great clients, Chanel, Calvin Klein, all these people mm-hmm. eventually we work with now. Yeah. But it meant a lot to like work for clients like that. Yeah. So we, and they wanted us, mm-hmm. like they were requesting us to oh, shoot okay. their events. Like, you guys specifically yeah, yeah specifically us that kind of was like the hint to like maybe we could do this on our own yeah um and yeah we we were like i remember many nights sleeping on the ground mm-hmm. you know in a sleeping bag and having mice running around our heads yeah and it was a commitment to something we didn't even know would be bfa it was like a just an idea of improving kind of impression of the work that we were doing yeah in our community of like a peer group. This is hustle at its finest. No, it's not a celebration of being a starving artist, although that's a reality for some. It's doing whatever you can to make a living out of your passion, diving right in, getting dirty, and allowing yourself to learn. Experience and knowledge are key, so it's great to hear David's journey begins with a diverse amount of photographic experience. Yes, he's widely known for event storytelling, documenting, and photography, but it was all that time in the studio, being the voice, and his interest in photojournalism, all of that culminates into his vocabulary and knowledge of how to work with clients in different settings that helps him excel today. Whatever you want to create, whether it's a brand you want to start or practice you want to build, be committed to growing individually. That growth process isn't linear. It comes from every single experience you have. So did the conversation to, to go off and start your own business happen like in that floor? <laughs> More or less, yeah. I think we just needed we're, their survival kind of... <laughs> Yeah. Instincts that like, catch up to you, and we're like, we were working really hard and not seeing the benefit of it um, for whatever a number of reasons. Um, but we learned a ton from Patrick. I think the idea of us being able, you know, just to start a BFA without that experience, it never would have happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but we saw that kind of opportunity, and we had a website kind of comparable yeah. to what he had made, uh-huh. and we understood like, this is what needed to be on a website or how the website needed to function for a client to, you know, have the same level of service. Yeah. You already uh, named that website B of A? No, originally it was Billy Farrell Agency. Okay. The idea of that was because Billy was recognized the most, you know, Uh clients were comfortable with that idea of like, okay, if it's not Patrick, then it's Billy. Okay. Billy had, and all of us had really started to form good, you know, loyalty within mm-hmm. some of these clients and their business. So we did a road show with our website and we said, Hey, we're going to start our own business and it's what it is. And with Patrick's blessing. No. Okay. Without Patrick's, without Patrick's <laughs> blessing. <laughs> without Patrick's blessing. Uh-huh. Um, so on the, on the low, on the low a little bit, but we just needed to understand if this was a possibility. Yeah. So you vetted Otherwise, out some, we were going to basically have to 
try another career. <laughs> right. Because you were hungry. I was ready to, yeah, I think I was ready to try something even outside of photography yeah. at that point. Right. Either like, go back to the family business or mm-hmm. just, I don't know. It just seemed like it was too hard. The end. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's really hard. And um, yeah, it just, I think our first client was Chanel. Really? Yeah. First client. It was the summer right before Fashion Week, September Fashion Week, 2010. Mm hmm. And we did a gig for them in Montauk for their like J12 watch brand. And it's like, yeah. okay, yeah. we're like, we're real now. And it was just the four of us. And we hired our first employee was a girl named Stephanie Ketty. It's like been our day one. She's still there. She runs our global business development now. And mm-hmm. it's amazing to have like people like that that yeah. believe in you. We were scared though, you know. Right. Is that, that a, a lot? Is that a job that would have went to Patrick? Yeah. Because, okay. Because. Uh, <laughs> That was his client, essentially. So, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We took clients mm-hmm. from him because essentially they wanted us. Yeah. They were comfortable working with us already. Right. right. Um, we did a really good job for them. Like mm-hmm. I said, we would bust their butt to make yeah, sure yeah. the photos were great. And back then on Patrick's website, you couldn't even see an image bigger than a thumbnail. It was crazy. Uh-huh. So like you're you're up all night working on photos and nobody's going to see bigger than a thumbnail yeah. except for the client. Right. So it wasn't about like the vanity Exposure or of any of it. Yeah. It was really just about client service. Yeah, right. And uh, I think that was the ethos and the kind of... What was know, that? Do you philosophy. recall what that conversation was like of the, the of the divorce? I think <laughs> Billy really took the brunt of okay. it because we did put his name on the door. And, <laughs> you, know, you, you take care of this. For him. <laughs> yeah, I'm thankful for him. He really, I mean, for a lot of times the only thing people even knew I was him partner in this business uh-huh. um and uh you know i i admire him for kind of like going about it very professionally and amicable as much as he could because mm-hmm. he was there for 10 12 years i yeah. was honestly surprised when i went to there and he wasn't the president of the business mm-hmm. right or a partner in it. right and i was like you do how are everything. you not <laughs> yeah you're, <laughs> right you're training all the photographers you're yeah kind of working you know hand in hand with sales and all the other departments did that go amicably? That come? No, not okay. with them. It, it almost I, think a, I think the way it all kind of came out was in a New York Times article. Uh, and it was <laughs> Patrick like kind of accusing, it was like a Caesar kind of. Yeah, yeah, moment, yeah, yeah. This abandonment and. Backstabbing. You know, backstabbing. Yeah, yeah. It was very dramatic. Oh, okay. Um, I figure it's going to be that way. But we tried to take fashion. a higher road, honestly. I think like we had good support and people. I remember like Fern Malice just being like, you know, we support you. Mm-hmm, you know, like mm-hmm. it's great. Everyone's got to go at some point. Yeah, you know? like, exactly. I remember hearing like Chef Malman say that, like his best people, he, like he pushes out. Mm-hmm. It's like when it's time to go, it's time to go. It's yeah. like do your own thing. Yep. Because you're going to be resentful or grow bitter. Mm-hmm. So it's about like kind of knowing. Evolving it. Yeah. Evolving and just kind of understanding when it's time to try something else. But this, like we said, we, we found – we've. We felt there was a white space there that needed, we needed to put a different product out there, mm-hmm. something that would elevate the brands as well as like the elevate the kind of impression of event photography. It had yeah. a pretty kind of low mm-hmm. opinion in the photography kind of yeah. <laughs> rankings of like oh, what's good and what's not. You know, right. it's like oh, you're just a party photographer. You just right. take a flash photo. And it just serves a purpose for you know a weekly mm-hmm. us magazine or whatever. Is who wore it best or right. something. And don't get me wrong, like that was part, part of what of we had to do. Yeah. It was part of it. But I think we knew we could add another element to it that mm-hmm. would create more of a interest or kind of a, that storytelling aspect Yeah, uh, that I, I always loved because the photojournalism kind of part of me. We could really do something different with this. And there was a number of times throughout the years where – that kind of element or the opportunity was presented to us where it's like you could go left or you can go right here mm-hmm. and stay with like the pack. Yeah. Or you could totally break off and try something and see what mm-hmm. happens. Yeah. And One, you guys did. Yeah. We usually went left. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are all four of the partners um, shooters? Yeah. Okay. We all started as, you know, we're photographers first. How do you distribute like the duties and responsibilities now? That's a great question. I mean, that was a hard part. It was also the best part of starting your own business is mm-hmm. having a team, like guys who all brought different strengths to the table. Yeah. I would have never done this on my own. Like I, I'm like 
guy like yourself, like someone who starts off on their own mm-hmm. and owns their own brand and has to do, you know, you have to 24 hour. Yeah. It's, it's up to you. Yep. How this business goes. Right. I had three other guys like who had my back mm-hmm. and I had their back. Yeah. And I don't think it would have worked with one person Solo, at the helm. Right. And so it was never like, you know, Billy Farrell agency in mm-hmm. the beginning, but we always saw it equal. Yeah. And uh, and structurally, it was equal to structurally. It was a, it was it was just freestyled in the beginning, <laughs> totally freestyle. It was like we ran, we just ran really to, from thing, yeah, from event to event. We got hired a lot in the beginning, believe it or not. It was like first Fashion Week, we were booked solid. Like so, we had gigs with everyone, you know, all the big clients, yeah. Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren. Wow, you know, working for great art institutions, you know, the Met. Uh-huh. Like we had big clients, yeah, yeah, right off the bat. Right, it was pretty encouraging. So I wanted, but get, we couldn't like scale it right away. We couldn't just like go out and hire twenty people. Yeah, it was like we had to shoot every gig. Uh huh. The four of you. Yeah. 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 Two, three events a night. If you right. had to, and we had to edit them all ourselves. Mm-hmm. Usually, we had a few editors in the beginning. Like it's all freelance. The whole business is based on freelance yeah, yeah, yeah. photographers and editors. And now we have like a core staff. But yeah, you depend. You depend on the freelancer mm-hmm. now. But, but I want to get into the weeds of this juncture because. I imagine a lot of people listening have like a nine to five job working for someone that they know they can do better for themselves on. And they might even have like a a small crew or click within the company that they're like sort of brainstorming a pipe dream of leaving and doing it on their own. There's so many people in that scenario right now. But I want to know for you, like, were you, were the four of you like, let's write a business plan let's like incorporate, let's get our equity right before we break off. Or when you got that Chanel gig, it was like, let's just do it. How organized were you prior to like leaving? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say we were unorganized, but I would say there was a lot of reaction to uh-huh. the opportunity Shit that was hitting you. That was happening fast. <laughs> um, but that was a good problem to have. Yeah. And we structured the business like okay. we all understood kind of our ownership uh-huh. a little bit of the roles it was more like you just had to be mm-hmm. ready everything to go yeah. at all times i mean right. i got married the week of our launch essentially <laughs> mm-hmm. and so there was no honeymoon <laughs> like go right to work <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Um, but that's what we all wanted to do we right. wanted to work so we kind of put it together as we went um i would say now if you were to think about doing anything like this i would encourage people to plan accordingly yeah, like yeah it's not easy but um i'm sure like there'll be something you know similar to us in some form of fashion mm-hmm. i mean it was an exciting time yeah and it was new like digital photography and kind of there was no social media this really is pre instagram it was right at the time okay instagram and i think that was a big move for us was actually incorporating social media right away yeah so I think we had Facebook kind of likes ability. We had, I was talking about how Patrick's photos were so small. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't make people buy subscriptions to see images larger. Mm-hmm. We wanted people to like see Share. their work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a big point of emphasis was right. our quality and that care that we put into the work. So we wanted to show it off mm-hmm. and we wanted it shared. Yeah. And people forget that when Instagram first hit, like brands weren't up on it for a I long put us time. On, I put us on Instagram like day one. Mm-hmm. And back then it was you couldn't upload your photos to it, your professional photos. So oh, that's like, right. You would go Dude, around. Dude, you the had phone. to shoot. You couldn't yeah. upload from your camera roll back then. Yeah, I would go to events and take pictures on the iPhone. Like, uh-huh. remember Hipstamatic? Yeah, Hipstamatic. <laughs> I used to mess with that. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, that was like pre visco Yeah, I'd bring like, like a light with me and um, and just light up like the person, and take the Instagram uh-huh. photo like within the app or within hip- the Hipstamatic or something. <laughs> I don't remember what I was doing, but it was fun. <laughs> David has great insight into what it really takes to break off with a group and start something on your own. When beginning, I can almost guarantee you it won't always be smooth sailing. Yes, there were structures put into place when David and his colleagues first started BFA, but like any new company, there are setbacks that are gonna come up along the way. Try and think these through early on. You may or may not have a business plan right away, but make an effort to anticipate what might come. Their experiences working under Patrick McMullen gave them great insight into the business. I'm sure as an assistant and manager earlier in his career, 
David was exposed to a lot of dealings that went way beyond the act of shooting. Pull from these experiences you gain and learn from what you saw. How did others deal with situations? What situations even came up? Is there a pattern that you're seeing with others and would you address them differently? Staying ahead of the curve early will undoubtedly pay off. And it doesn't have to focus on just hurdles. For example, it was perfect timing with David and the start of Instagram. But he saw the introduction of the photo app as a business opportunity, an extension of what he was already doing. So you should always keep your eyes out on how situations play out, what's bubbling in culture. But at the same time, you should also keep your gears turning because you never know when you might need to reference those experiences and when an opportunity like that occurs. There was that that understanding then that there was going to be a need a need for speed mm-hmm. of this content and the delivery. We already had this, you know, built into our businesses. Every everything we photograph is delivered by 8 a.m. the next day. Yeah. No matter how many hours the event was or how big or how many photos it had to be done. And in the beginning it was done by you guys. It was done by us a lot of the times yeah. editing. Um which I miss, you know. Uh-huh. I miss the, How big is the, the team editing now? aspect of it because that's where a lot of the good ideas were kind of born. Right. From just sitting there in front Late of the nights. computer. And, yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. A couple of drinks. Right. How big is the whole team now? Uh, we have, you know, like I said, we're, we're, we have an office in LA and New York and there's probably about 15, 20 kind of core staff members mm-hmm. and then anywhere between 40, 50, 60 freelancers, yeah. like editors and photographers. Uh-huh. People coming in and out, you know. Yeah. There's no, you know, required, you know, time that you're you're there. If you want to work, mm-hmm. be available. Yeah, like we'll send you gigs. But what we always did was really train the photographers and editors that came through the door mm-hmm. to do the job kind of how we expected it done. Yeah, but with an open mind to like what they were interested in as For well. Sure. Like we yeah. wanted their style to come out. Mm-hmm. I think that was a big part of it was like to allow photographers to be photographers, mm-hmm. like to encourage what they saw. Like, yeah. you know, everyone's eyes different. And, um, you know, that's how, what made us good was like we played off each other well right. in the beginning. And Billy saw something I would be doing. I saw something he would be doing or Joe. And I'm like, that's cool. I want to incorporate that. How did you do that with the flash or or your settings? And mm-hmm. Goes back to that the idea of workshopping, which is like something I think is important. Yeah, you know, in our creative fields, like you gotta get some feedback sometimes. You right, know? right. If you're just always so close to it, you never see if it's any. You don't really know if it's any good. Yeah, yeah totally. But it's it was also about like you know, you're as good as your last photo too. Like you just kind of moved on uh-huh. so fast. It right. was like just you spent all this time on something and it's gone. Yeah. Next day and got a new gig. Right. And you, you kind of had to always, the freshness of it was great, though, mm-hmm. exciting. So, um, do you still get out there and? Oh, yeah. I'm, you I'm do? Out there photographing all the time. Really? All the time. Very events much. for clients. Events too. for clients, yeah. Um, as well as, I think more so now, I'm out there covering things that I think are important to be at. Uh huh. I think that we do a service, not just for our clients, but the community. It's yeah. It's like a really important um, philosophy. For us is also to like service our peers, you know, mm-hmm. like make who's going to be the next kind of like that fifteen minutes Andy Warhol yeah, stuff. Yeah. You just don't know, right? But I identify with talent mm-hmm. and kind of artists, and um, how do you I love to that, be around them? How do you and put so, that out? Is there like an editorial sort no, of? No, I think it all it it's always been grouped together, like with the same importance in okay. a way. I don't think anything is more important than another and if mm-hmm. you treated one client special you wouldn't like you know all the clients should feel special yeah 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 um that their event is something they worked really hard on mm-hmm. and they just put money into it and you treat it like the same right um and i treat you know young upstart kind of events as well the same uh-huh. way because you might find some amazing people there you might find amazing people or the whatever they're doing is really interesting or impactful and deserves that kind of highlight yeah and it deserves to have a spotlight on it and to be talked about and to have some kind of professional imagery right um, i mean early on it was not as many photographers out doing the parties and events but mm-hmm. and now it's a pretty popular kind of thing to yeah. see a bunch of cameras at an event but totally. i always wanted to feel 
like the people trusted me to be there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that kind of carries through our, our business is that we are good people. Yeah. You know, we try to give off a good energy and just be respectful mm -hmm. and, um, but also like be participants, not just be like a camera. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, this, this is like, it's a tough, this is actually a big subject that's coming up a lot with me is like that image control thing and, um, the impression that photographers are kind of creating yeah. of, you know, how, what they expect from people. Like you just expect somebody to take a photo because mm -hmm. they're famous or you got a camera, so you deserve that photo or something. Yeah. I don't know, but there's a, some recklessness that's going on right now that it's a little troublesome. I don't want to get lumped into that. You know, I think our Wait, business- can you, can you can clarify be, that a little yeah, bit more? What do you mean? Well, you're speaking as the some, photographer, not yeah, as the, the a, subject. You know, yeah. Okay. But I sympathize with the subject. I think that it's very important to consider the feelings or, or the way you know people react to your camera. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's easier when people get to know you. So my years of experience have led like to good relationships with people yeah. that are used to seeing me, and are used to me taking their picture, and are allowing, mm -hmm. and kind of more genuine in the photo or something. Right. Um, but it's harder to do that or yeah. connect with newer people. Mm -hmm. Like people I just meet now, they just look at you and they're like, oh, you're just a cameraman. Right. Like, get out of my face or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. didn't take another guy already yeah. take a picture? You know, right. like, what do you need? <laughs> so it's challenging. Um, I'd rather connect with somebody before I yeah. take an image. Gotcha. And that will sometimes screw you over. Mm -hmm. You'll, like, you'll, you'll might miss lose the shot. shot. Yeah. Yeah. But I may get it the next time in right. a different way, right? In a, in a more kind of, you know, intimate way. Yeah, and that's what I'm always after mm -hmm. in image making. But I, I'm, I'm excited about the era we're in. Digital world and content is crazy. I mean, it's, there's a lot of business out there yeah. for young photographers, for graphic designers, animators, video. Mm -hmm. It's an exciting time to be working in content creation, but. I think that the message I would kind of give to any young aspiring photographer is just be careful like of kind of the expectation yeah. that, that you feel people are obliged to take your photo or mm -hmm. to take a photo with you mm -hmm. because of whomever they are or yeah. whomever you think you are. I mean, right. you, just, you just don't know how people are one yeah. day or another. And, you know, people are sensitive about how they're coming across, mm -hmm. you know, image controls very relevant yeah uh, you know celebrities sometimes they don't go out of the house unless they really have to be at this event and they're in black tie right mm -hmm. but there's this kind of unwritten thing where it's like you just show up and you know you're liable to get your photo taken yeah you better get dressed yeah you, know? you totally. better look good or whatever right and a lot of the kind of competing photography out there they don't they used to not care as much mm -hmm. about the, the person the way they may or may not look in the images, they cared about the sale of the photo. Yeah. Right? You just right. had to get it down. You had to get, the shot. It, get yeah. it out right. to the world. And um, we had that pressure to kind of keep up with the wire. Yeah. You know, wire is, selling yeah. the photography mm -hmm. on the wire, which is like, you know, the place where magazines or publications would find your images and pay for the image. What was great about our business is that we get paid creative fees, hourly mm -hmm. fees to, to work come. Yeah. for the client, right. right? So we never had tremendous pressure to sell photography. Mm -hmm. It was always great, like we called it soyam, sit on your ass money. Sit on soy, your ass. Soyam. Soyam. <laughs> sit on your ass money. <laughs> Billy's, nice. Billy's term. Loves it. <laughs> um, yeah. It was always nice to have that uh -huh. money, but it was not a priority for us. Yeah. I thought that putting in that little extra time of editing the photo or maybe killing that photo, mm -hmm. not flattering, mm -hmm. you know? Right. You just sit over the editor's shoulders, like, eh, you know? Yeah. Maybe they need a little touch up here or something. Just not a lot. We're not doing like extensive retouching. I mean, yeah. That would be costly. Right. But it was effective to do that little extra. Mm -hmm. And um, you're servicing your client and the peer. Yeah. The peers in your community. Right. So people started to like recognize our photos were better or nice they liked their photo that we took they wanted it mm -hmm. so i started like an ambassador program i was like i need to 
make sure that people have the photo. Yeah. Like for them to get on our website and like buy every photo that they like of themselves. And I saw Instagram coming around and it's mm-hmm. like somewhere you could push out the nice photos on yep. the app. And I was like, this is becoming a thing. And mm-hmm. I responded to that pretty quickly, knowing that that was something we should do. So I liked, I'm still daily like sending people photos. Yeah. My friends dope. usually or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I, I liked that that would, that became the marketing. Yeah. The marketing of our business was like seeing your tag, BFA. Mm-hmm. That sometimes people willingly would do it. Sometimes I'd ask them to do it. Right. Whether it was a celebrity or an influencer or call them ambassadors back then. Back mm-hmm. in the day, they were influencers. <laughs> they were working for like one or two brands, not like working for a hundred. Yeah, right. That's cool, you know? Yeah. It Good must be thing. so different now than when so you first different. started. Because so different. Now at an event, there's probably like a hundred people with like, a DSLR camera, right? Yeah, or like a hundred people with clout, like yeah. Yeah, and you don't know actually yeah. who's covering, who's shooting, and who's the influencer. It's like no, they all have like their little are. like either it's their boyfriend, or yeah, yeah, the intern with their camera, like make, and they got twenty minutes to take a photo with uh-huh. the phone. Or, yep, yep. Or God bless them. You know? <laughs> cool. I'm into it all. I'm here for it all. But yeah, like back in the day, I remember like we kind of like helped launch some of the careers of some of these mm-hmm. people, which is kind of cool. Yeah. In a way. I remember like seeing certain people, like Olivia Palermo, for instance. Like she was when she was like first on the scene, she was beautiful, stylish, refined, mm-hmm. interesting subject, right? Yeah. And you just photographed her. Mm-hmm. It was just like it was blending in Patrick years into like sort of BFA. But those type of people it was like you could see the trajectory. Yeah. You know? And they carried themselves as such. Mm-hmm. Um so I think, you know, by all means, she deserves her success because she worked hard at creating an image yeah, um, and associating herself with the right brands. And so I loved uh, I loved seeing that kind of loyalty mm-hmm. in the business too. At that time, it was like, it was a lesson for us. It was like, we need to establish relationship first. Yeah. That is the, that's going to be the key ingredient throughout mm-hmm. all this. Like we are not as big as Getty or a, another one of these agencies we can't compete like, right in that sense but what we can do is really nail these relationships yeah and you know you could pick up the phone and talk to us or mm-hmm. stephanie at the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> he was doing everything booking us and you know running the show and we built like a really solid team of sales and you know kind of client and customer service and those are those are the top priorities for us This notion of relationship building is key, especially when coming up. If the head leaders in your industry are already offering something clients want, what do you bring to the table? Is it a fresh, defined perspective? Is it a scrappy operation that makes any turnaround quick and stretches any budget beyond expectation? Is it the fact that you're amazing with people and you can connect the dots with numerous relationships? There are some things that are invaluable you can't put into a line item or an expense report. David always knew what they were up against and knew how they differentiated themselves from other big companies. However, there's going to be a time where you're no longer the fresh kid on the scene, and now you're the established figure. So always find a way to provide something new, different, and to the highest standard. If you're not allowing yourself the opportunity to update or pivot, then you might be setting yourself up for the next up and comer to pass you by. Do you ever fear that there's like a similar to how when you guys were at Patrick and you guys were like the rogue rat pack that like splintered off? Do you feel like now you're that guy? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) How could you not? Um, It's good to have a little fear uh, Uh and paranoia about that. Keeps you like on your toes. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that we'd probably give someone the blessing, you know, to at at a certain point. Like it was a, it was not a clean break from Patrick, as I yeah. kind of alluded to. Yeah. Uh, there was an animosity there. I think now things have smoothed over, but back then it was, it felt ugly. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we'd want that anymore. Yeah. You know, if we sense something like that was happening, we'd probably just communicate. Mm-hmm. It's like we're open. Like even now, if a freelance photographer is getting a gig, even with a gig 
like a client that we work with, yeah, I'd, I'd much rather them tell us about it first, just do it sneakily on their own. Mm -hmm. Most times or not, we're going to be like, by all means, you know, yeah. is it a similar service or, you know, than what we provide? Yeah. Probably not. It's probably just like this offshoot thing. And, mm -hmm. You know, I was a freelancer once. I knew that you had to go out there and get your own work sometimes. I, yeah. None of these, there's no, there's no illusion when you're working at BFA that this is not your primary job. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for you to pick up yeah. work, freelance, get better. Right. Or hopefully make contacts. Yeah, yeah, you're making contacts. I've photographers that are artists mm -hmm. love being in the art world. Yeah. Parties, you know, they're making contacts. It's right. great. Good for you. Like that's what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Network. But don't be out there selling yourself in a way mm -hmm. while you're on the job or just kind of trying to go after our clients or undercut. Like that's where it gets there's a you know, it's a gray area. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's better to talk about it. Right. We want to create a wholesome environment mm -hmm. with the freelancers that they should feel safe with, you know, that kind yeah. of communication that we're ultimately trying to benefit their career. Do you find that some of the younger generation have a hard time discerning that gray line of like professionalism oh, and yeah. hustle? They want to skip to the top <laughs> right away. Right. Like there is no ladder. It's an elevator that's on the express. It's okay, but I mean, if I were young, I'd probably have that same Maybe. attitude. I try to not be like the old guy and be like, what are you doing? But like, you no. know, I'll hire someone for a shoot, for example, and like they're posting the shoot happening before like they're letting me see the imagery Ooh. and tagging me. And I'm like, but see, they're tagging me, so they don't think it's a wrong thing. But I'm like, that's so unprofessional. <laughs> but you got to lay it out. You got to put it, you got to lay it out for them. You have right. to... I mean, a, a very common nobody's sense telling rule, you, but like, it's like so common sense. Mm, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much of that goes on. Like, yeah. there, I mean, sometimes I'll see, like you just said, mm -hmm. the photo of whatever celebrity. Yeah. You know, say it's Bella Hadid or something. Mm -hmm. and the photographer's so psyched that they just photograph Bella Hadid. It's on it's their on Instagram their, before it's, on, their it's on the website. Yeah. That happens and all I'm the like, time. You can't do that. Um, the client should always be first. Mm -hmm. And, I'm technically their client, yeah. but I'm, it's not about, it's like I want to teach them how to work with clients mm -hmm. so they understand that tact, that professionalism, so they can have a career, yes. you know, like that you can learn what, what their expectations yeah. are. You should put their expectations before your own. Totally. Um, but are we just but there's, old? You know, there's people that are making <laughs> a, you know, making, making a career without the help you know the clients are coming to them now yeah because right? yeah, yeah. they got the big following and they got the right friends mm -hmm. and i mean more power to you right you know god bless you but you i kind of start grinding you i kind grind of think it. like yeah I, I mean there's that saying like don't bite the hand that feeds you and whoever you know whether it's like your you know b of a is feeding that photographer you're the you're the feeder or the client whether it's like a chanel or whatever right like don't do something that's going to violate that trust that they put in you that is the messaging. I mean, we have um, pretty rigorous training. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, we have guidelines work, and stuff. Guideline, yeah. you know, kind of that. What's expected? Yeah. And we have invested heavily in the talent development side of what we do. Mm -hmm. Like we have a former educator who is a photographer as well for us, who is just really great communicator. Yeah. It was tough for us to like criticize people when they would do a bad job because we're like coming down on them. Right. Mainly because we're looking out for, you know, number one, mm -hmm. like, we don't want to lose a client. Yeah. And so they, someone would mess up a gig or just do something wrong or leave someone's name off or, or spell it wrong mm -hmm. or just little, could be little things, but it's the little things that matter. Yep. It's details that, you know, we drove home that was the that was the element that we you know we banked on our yeah. success was the care yeah. of every element mm -hmm. it, it's a marathon yeah you know you you don't you don't just get 75 80 90 percent of the way mm -hmm. and get a medal right. you gotta like cross the line and so just go in there and taking great photos and everyone's happy thank you so much for 
you know, you did a great job, but then you mess up the edit. Yeah. You know, you just don't care about looking up someone's name the right way. I mean, right. just the first name you see and you put that name and it's wrong. Right. You don't know who you're offending. And um, you got to go all the way. You got to yeah. go all the way with the job and the delivery of, you know, the product. Mm -hmm. There has to be quality in what you do if that's what you stand for. And you, how, how do you, you know, how does that trickle down to mm -hmm. a guy who's not invested in your business? Yeah. Like he's... He's not the owner, right? So why would he care? Yeah. So that that leadership style, um, it came from listening too. It didn't just like wasn't effective to be very critical and kind of demanding. Mm -hmm. As a good leader, you should be open to listening to whatever struggle maybe they had a bad night whatever it was right that led to that poor execution mm -hmm. like there's outside issues or whatever it is because everyone's different yeah all these you know we're, they're all artists at the end of the day uh -huh. sensitive <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um so it's about that i hear you i yeah. hear you right okay let's work on this and like how do you gently kind of expect mm -hmm. a lot out of people right uh without you know, I don't employ them. They're not, um, you know, they could leave tomorrow mm -hmm. if they wanted to. Yeah. But that's the choice I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. You mean the choice to work, make money, get better, make connections, like you said, or whatever, yeah. be in front of all these people that you admire, mm -hmm. celebrities or designers or artists or people that are making a difference. Yeah. And that's a that should be enough to keep you around and also that you know you're getting better the mm -hmm. whole idea is the training all these things that continue to improve workshopping like right. I told you before workshopping is what made me confident mm -hmm. as a photographer if I was doing this alone all the time I would have a hard time mm -hmm. I would struggle with my own identity yeah because if you're so close to your work all the time you're just locked into it how do you know whether it's good or not mm-hmm um, so the idea of like being supportive and helping photographers improve, editors, anyone who works for us, it's just that listening aspect that kind of receive it, that quiet, like, you know, stillness sometimes instead yeah. of the reaction, mm -hmm. the defensiveness right. or whatever. The table flipping. <laughs> yeah, because deep down, you know, like, this is a serious thing. You mm -hmm. just want to communicate that in a way that doesn't, you know, break somebody's spirit. Yes. But also, you want to display to them the severity of what happened. Absolutely. At the same time. So it is important to just illuminate. Yeah. What others, you know, this is what this is what the cause and the effect is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's been photographers that came in, and they have like an ego. They maybe have done something prior and uh, made them feel a certain way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they got would get snapped on like somebody, like. Pretend like they're a guest at the party. Uh -huh. You know, like, yeah. I'm cool enough to be here. Like, right. I shouldn't even be photographing. Right, right. Sometimes you're made to feel like you're a glorified. You're like, yeah. no, the photography, like, sometimes you just got to bite your lip sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, you're there in service. Yeah. Like, sometimes the clients are like, why aren't you dressed like the waiter almost? You know, it's mm -hmm. like you got to be in all black. Yeah. And right. And like, almost some clients want you invisible. Totally. Some clients need you to step up and like run the show. Mm -hmm. You have to know when. But there would be people that would just felt like too comfortable, mm -hmm. you know? Or they've gained a certain notoriety and so yeah. they feel like but entitled. But there's a place to be checked. And sometimes, like, they got checked. Mm -hmm. And I would say the ones who really cared about their career, like, re responded to that yeah, really well. Mm -hmm. The ones who didn't, they're not here anymore. Right. They're just bad apples. Yeah. Like someone, you're going to learn the hard way. Yeah. But some people need that. Like, mm -hmm. I had that. I got checked a few times, you know, mm -hmm. like I needed those moments. The backhand slap, those, the, psh, yeah, just the glove like, off slap. Who are you? Like, you know, get out of here. Like, you know, just yeah. a lot of humbling experiences throughout um, that you can relate to them on. Mm -hmm. And being relatable or just having that, like I said, that communication with all these photographers, freelancers, that's really key. I've found that they respond really well and they care about what they're doing. Yeah. Because it's a representation of themselves. Right. It's a representation of 
EFA. Of course. And they're representing themselves when they're there. Yeah. And they'll go far because of those experiences, mm -hmm. I think. You know, I'm hoping. If you're in the position to manage or lead, don't take David's words with a grain of salt. Follow them. These are so important. Supportive, listening, communicate, quiet stillness versus defensiveness. These are traits and actions we all need. I'm sure we've seen a meme or even a think piece about what makes a great boss or how to spot a toxic leader. The takeaways are universal. Like what David said, a lot of the people that work for BFA are freelance and don't have a commitment to the company. But what he looks for is a commitment to the work and he's 100% down to guide and coach them through it. There definitely is an abundance of unprofessionalism. Shoot, you heard me complain about it before. But delivering that message as a stern, teachable moment makes everyone better. You as a leader, your counterpart who becomes better for future work, and the work itself. You may or may not have the official managing title, but that doesn't matter. There's always going to be a moment where you can instill all of this. Trust me. Do you like the image making aspect of it better or the people management thing better? Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a, I would say a business man. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of having a business that's representative of creative kind of endeavors and pursuits. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a very good, you know, day to day kind of operations guy. I'm a, but that's why I love having business partners. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like we all, there's a lot of sharing, sharing yeah. in the roles. Um, I enjoy more of the creative pursuits mm -hmm. and the the fostering of talent, the fostering of relationships, clients, community. I'm, I'm really trying to reach out. Yeah, to the community as much as I can, not because it's a fad, it's just something that was built into me at an early age. Mm -hmm. Like I gravitated towards culture, always. I was kind of raised in a limited, you know, environment when it came to like what you had access to. But mm -hmm. I was close to New York, and I traveled the world, so I had perspective. And so my partners, you know, we. Genuine, that's the messaging. The yeah. Images matter. It's like the coined tagline. Tagline. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's it's not about the business of this. It's really about the product. Right. I and mean, the sharing of the culture is the thing. Yeah. Working in a very elevated, you know, scene. Yeah. It's not like available to the masses. Right. You know, New York. LA, Paris, you know, mm -hmm. London. More and more you're seeing great content and images come from everywhere, which yeah. is great because of social media and sharing. And I tell like photographers who are like, I want to come to New York and work for, for BFA. And I'm like, where are you from? I'm from uh, you know, little town America here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what's like what is your scene like? Mm -hmm. Do do your does your photography represent like where you're from, where yeah. you're at? Like, can you make me a story? Like, can you mm -hmm. make a story out wherever of you're from, wherever right. you're from? Because that's interesting. Yeah, you totally. know what I mean. If you're always aspiring to like what's out there, mm -hmm. and you don't, you just you neglect what's right in front of you. I think that makes a good storyteller, a Hell good yeah. photographer, is someone who can just like identify the elements around him, no matter what. Yeah, no matter what, and be aware of it, and just be like, you know, I could tell right this story. That person to me is someone I'm going to be more interested in engaging. Absolutely. Than the person who's just like, I just want to be around uh, so and so. Yeah. You know, you know Virgil. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, one of the questions we always get is like, I'm not from New York, LA, or Paris. How am I supposed to make it? Are you gonna but break in? Yeah, you gotta you be said here. It. Blah blah. You and don't today. I don't think you do. No. No. There's so much co-creating that's happening, like mobily. Mm -hmm. You know, just send me. You know, here. Yeah. Here's the pri Like, you know, you do graphic work. Mm -hmm. There's a kid like sending me graphics from like London or whatever. And, you don't have to be here. Yeah. You know, here's the project. Uh -huh. you know, everything can be done over a Skype phone call or whatever. I know. It's yep. incredible. Yeah. Um, so I love the technology that's, you know, allowing for more contribution. Mm -hmm. 
uh, there is a lot of noise. Yeah. And so it's like sift sorting, through. Yeah. sifting through <laughs> it. But that's why it's like the representation of quality. Mm -hmm. I think if we stick with that, hopefully it wins. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to kind of do with these photographers and mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, this is ultimately where your head should be at. Like yeah. you should be really caring about everything you do mm -hmm. and finish it. Don't just start it. Yeah. Um, so doing it on a day in, day out basis is really helpful for them. Mm -hmm. Like I used to have a hard time just finishing a project. And it was like, you get going on something and there's a distraction. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like a multitasker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the, when I'm in it, I'm in it, which yeah. is great. You can find the zone. But um, once you're like checked out for a minute or something like pulls you in another direction, how do you get that thing done? Mm -hmm. uh, so starting a business was something that's like, I don't think I could do it on my own. Yeah. I don't think it would have gotten done the right way. Mm -hmm. But we shared on that. Gone are the days where you absolutely need to be in cities like LA, New York, London, or Paris to break in. Technology has not only given us the resources to create at a high level, but to communicate and connect in an instant. I want us to stop boxing ourselves in and allow the opportunity for everyone to at least get a look. David's advice is a great exercise for anyone not living in a major city. What is your perspective? What is the story of the city or town that you're from? Define that because storytelling is anywhere and everywhere. If you can't make something compelling with what's in front of you, how can I, David, or anyone else be confident you can do it in a setting that everyone chases? Be clear with your vision and use every tool available to you. No one is stopping you from getting your work out. Remember what David says, everyone's only just a Skype call away. It sounds like the act of managing these people and freelancers and stuff is merely a means to the image matters sort of credo, right? Like spreading the culture. It's not something that you would love to do, but it's a necessity to get that job done. Yeah. Um, I think we all grow tired of it sometimes. <laughs> you know, there's nights where you just don't want to go. Yeah. Or you have anxiety like going and you're like, why do I still feel this? You know, you have anxiety going. Yeah, to sometimes I'll go to a gig and I'm like nervous. Really? I guess it's good. I mean, to feel nerve still, but you know, I'm ten years plus doing yeah, this. I'm shocked that you still feel nervous. Yeah, it's there's insecurity, man. Like I have, I'm, like I'm vulnerable too. You uh -huh. know, like I put on a good face <laughs> pretty easily. <laughs> like you know, when you walk in, it's like okay, it's game time. Uh -huh. and, but there's times where I'm nervous that I'm doing, I'm not doing the job right or. I've missed stuff and wow. it actually helps you. Even 10 years in. Yeah. But having now those nerves is what's keeping me kind of hustling. Yeah. Sharp. Yeah, yeah. Right. But uh, it's totally normal to feel those things and feel less than. Mm -hmm. Like I've, there's a lot of times where I feel less than the kind of environment I'm in. Yeah. Because I'm made to you're feel in these, I'm in a service business. I mean, that, of these high profile events usually. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that humility has been really a, a great guiding light for me as well. Um, and really, all of us guys, we understand that that you know, if you want a business to represent like a greater idea, mm -hmm. you got to take a you know back seat to that. Yeah, personally, your right. ambitions, your kind of own identity is background to the pro, like your your brand and your product. Mm -hmm. So we shifted Billy Farrell agency at one point to BFA mm -hmm. on purpose. It was about a collective. It wasn't about a person, one yeah. person. And, you know, I think Billy just, we knew we had to do that in the beginning just to kind of get the clients to understand, okay, mm -hmm. you know, what is BFA? But we know Billy. Okay, sure. That's yeah, safe. Makes sense. And then you do the job well enough and right. they don't care what you call it. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> as long yeah. as you deliver. Yeah. You know? I want to touch on that anxiety issue a little bit because just coming off of Paris Fashion Week, and I was talking to a lot of photographers who were like working Paris Fashion Week, you know, the anxiety that they feel of um, entering these uh, sort of walled off environments of like, I mean, every level of like a sh of the fashion industry is made to be a wall that you have to like feel validated to get through, right? From styling, casting to the 
the door to the red carpet. Like every single thing is like a do I belong thing. And it's it's both shocking and also refreshing that even you, 10 years into a very successful business, still feels sometimes that way. Yeah, I always feel like the small guy in a way. Wow. Like I think it's just that um, kind of, it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a good a good perspective that I have on it all. Yeah, and I I do truly feel grateful for mm -hmm. the opportunities, every opportunity that is afforded to me. Mm -hmm. um, we're a small company that does big things, and yeah. we work in very exclusive environments. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a lot of you know, I would say privilege too yeah. that. You're there, right? And so there's it's like an a, honor to be at this. Yeah, thing. yeah, I truly like. I don't just dismiss it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think maybe that's where you're getting in trouble if you just right. like expect it all the time, special treatment or yes. whatever. I still f treat everything like fresh and just be very present in those mm -hmm. moments and just like try to just give off a good energy. Yeah, yeah. Because this it could be a sticky kind of situation it could mm -hmm. be just overcrowded or just like you're getting pushed around or people are just bossing you around they're really mean to you like yeah pr people are just not friendly <laughs> Meanwhile, those pr like I people do, i could feel like i could do their jobs too you know <laughs> so what are you really doing you're just checking names off a list like, come on. <laughs> i'm out here conducting yeah you yeah. know we're directing a vibe sometimes mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. important to like have that energy where you make people feel comfortable because we talked about image you know, control these days. Uh, sometimes people are nervous about yeah. where they're going to end up. And this photo is that representative of me and like what I'm trying to do is I can help me get a job. Like mm -hmm. I'm partying on the table at, you know, one Oak one night and you take a photo that compromises me. And you're like, yep. I'm being considerate of all that. Yeah. Like, I don't want to miss anything. Like I'd like to be where there's, this, you know, gravitated energy. energy. Yeah. I'll sense it very, yeah. like I'm very good at that now, uh -huh, discerning uh -huh. kind of, the movement bubbling yeah 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 i always tell people it's like a lot about the movement mm -hmm. as a photographer it's not about like settings or having something you know perfect for yourself yeah. like if you're doing this job like you're moving right it's not one place that you get to hang yeah. and just make a you know you got a controlled thing it's <laughs> a lot of it's a lot of adaptation you're yeah, just yeah. freestyling you're a chameleon you know you right. got to adapt to different environments it's challenging yeah but um i feel very blessed to do you know some of the work I do, yeah, um, that people entrust us to be in these environments and mm -hmm. tell their story and create images that you know represent what they were trying to do. Yeah. So uh, I would, you know, for the people that are attending these events, the you know the, that kind of pursuit of you know, getting through, breaking through, or yeah. whatever, getting in, getting, getting over. in. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of you know people crave it, and some people don't you know mm -hmm. crave it necessarily they're there because like they ought to be there or they're there supporting a friend and who's done something you know that they you know feel the need to show up for yeah and a lot of people are just there and they don't know why mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um i don't judge it though i yeah. really try to stay away from kind of how to you know kind of make sense of it all yeah but i think I, it's good that you have that perspective of feeling honored to be there and blessed to be there yeah. because it's a slippery slope if you start feeling like you deserve to be there your <laughs> no life will, i no guarantee that's, i guarantee you your life will get right shitty yeah. really fast if you start thinking you deserve to be at places well i mean sometimes you're part of like what it is they're doing and mm -hmm. like even if you contributed in some level or some way to what it is that's happening whether it's fashion show or I, but I, I know how hard it's for a lot of the people to get to where they're at and to see other people just kind of like ho hum it. Yeah. And that's sad, you know? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. you're just here and you don't even know why you're here. Yeah. Like, this guy just busted his butt to like do this, you know, whatever Thing, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And we're here to like honor that. Right. And you're just here because you want a photo op or because like you want to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Right. Or you're really trying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. But hopefully they'll figure that out. That yeah, that's not what it's all about. Right. Like you want to be places where you feel like-minded, mm -hmm. you know, with the, your environment. Like yeah. You want to kind of, or that it's a, 
maybe something that's out of your comfort zone that you're there to learn from mm -hmm. or kind of observe in a way and strive to be part of it. Yeah. Um, I continue to just be always grateful for those moments. Mm -hmm. Whatever setting you're in, remember you're there to learn. That's a great mindset coming from David. There's a sense of staying humble and being mindful when talking about his approach to his work. And that mindset will get you far and get you better as a professional. Especially in the rooms that he works in, you never know who might walk through the door or walk in front of his lens. Any sense of entitlement or pretentiousness can quickly be seen. And what it does is blind you from observing and learning. Don't get caught up in the glitz and glamor of an event or the clout of a shoot. There is a process and there is work that needs to be done. So be a sponge and absorb as much as possible. I've heard that um, photography right now is probably one of the hardest creative professions to try to excel in because of the democratization of it all. So what advice would you give a young photographer? Like, is it time to give up? <laughs> like, or is it like, what is some advice? Like, you know, to differentiate yourself from every Instagrammer with a iPhone X. It's a lot or, you know, or contacts, uh, mm -hmm. film camera, the film camera. Oh, the new, yeah, that's right a new, that's right a new vibe. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. I'm like, man, there was a reason we stopped shooting film. <laughs> it's a pain in the butt and it's expensive. Expensive, yeah. But I think it's beautiful. I mean, I, I'm more encouraged than I am discouraged by the kind of... New crop of photographers. Democracy, like you said. Yeah, yeah. People deserve an opportunity to have their art seen mm -hmm. and as long as they're expressing it from a genuine like kind of honest place if it feels like themselves like it feels like a general like this is an extension of me kind yeah. of thing like i can't live without doing this like mm -hmm. i sense that from you like i know when you're kind of bullshit mm -hmm. um there's some people that are just picking up a camera just because like the street fa you know you, you've been yeah. around like you know you see the street fashion stuff mm -hmm. is crazy yeah it's a total scene out there. It's mm -hmm. the new runway. I mean, but I also find that fascinating yeah. at the same time. I used to, honestly, Jeff, I used to disguise myself and go around uh -huh. like hooded, like try to just be behind yeah. it all. That like shit show. Yeah, no, yeah, because I thought I would, I was making beautiful images. I love to be outside. I love mm -hmm. light. Yeah. Like I'm a photographer. My favorite beer is Natty Light, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid joke. Um, but yeah, I love to be outside. And I learned that from watching, you know, I, I think it's cool. All of it is cool. And I remember when it all started to happen. It was, I was working Bryant Park, you know, fashion shows. And I would see paparazzi outside, mm -hmm. Bill Cunningham, mm -hmm. eventually. The legend, yeah. Yeah. You know, the legend, man. Wow. Watching him work, like his movements. Uh -huh. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. It's a vibe. His eyes and just like, it yeah. didn't matter, like technical side of the way. He, right. he just had to, he was there. Yeah. Like he was there for all. He didn't even know your name. Mm -hmm. You probably met him a hundred times. He'd be like, okay, child. All yeah. right. <laughs> you know, he's not interested. He's like, he's looking at the fashion. And yeah. That was yeah. the first time I saw him. He went like, like, that guy's out here doing that street. Yep. You know, right. lifestyle. He was telling, you know, trend stories on Sunday styles, or whatever. And then there was guys like Scott, the mm -hmm. tutorialist who came through and like, yep. he had a totally different approach. He was like mm -hmm. more, you know, composition, yeah. you know, priority and 50 millimeter lens and, then like Tommy Tom came in with like kind of a more, you know, detail mm -hmm. approach to it. And I was loving it. I was really enjoying being outside of the shows. Yeah. Cause I knew who to shoot because mm -hmm. I was just inside. Yeah. And I knew who would be coming out or whatever. I'd be ready. And I would take the flash off the camera and just shoot like the way I was kind of taught to right. shoot, right. which is more journalistically. And I love blending the two. Mm-hmm. Getting those portraits and knowing how to stop someone, doing like Scott style, doing just a straight capture. Yeah. Getting a, just an energy, like a bill, mm -hmm. seeing detail, right. like a Tommy. So those guys all influenced me. I saw what they were doing with some, you know, some notoriety at that point and it just kind of built. I remember finding guys that I wanted to shoot for BFA Street. Yeah. That were doing it differently. I really looked for something unique, what mm -hmm. they did, and I care about fashion. Like, right. so I pulled like Julian Boudet out. Blue mode, he's done great. Um, mm -hmm. He's doing a lot on his own, but I had him shooting fashion weeks for me all around the world. Actually, yeah. he was like, "I'm going to Georgia or to you know Tbilisi or mm -hmm. 
Russia. And yeah. I'm like, amazing. That's uh -huh. so cool. Like, tell me the story yeah. of what that place is like, man, because nobody's there. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I've never seen it. Right. Like, what's the architecture like? What's the fashion like? Whatever. Your friends, like, that you're hanging with. Like, yeah. what's your experience like? It's great. And I've, I've loved being a part of those kind of stories too, mm -hmm. like helping somebody kind of see their potential. Yeah. And their, what they're doing, kind of patronizing it. So that's, been a blessing too is patronizing mm -hmm. kind of work i like um yeah photographers but so that's yeah, like, it's a tough time to be like a yeah you, you're out there grinding i don't i don't i want every anyone listening to think that there's an opportunity for you mm -hmm. I, I just think that you need to find what's true to you yeah yeah and not it's my father always said like put yourself in front of the best like go to museums and look at the greats work mm -hmm. and i did that a lot and i when i first started i've had like photographers who i idolize and i started copying their work and mm -hmm. and doing what they were doing or trying to yeah and then i found my own thing mm -hmm. through that so at a certain point you need to just identify that yeah and if you feel there's a response to that then you should continue to represent yourself in that way mm -hmm. and push it but also look back on your work be a great piece of advice I'd give any young photographer is that perspective of like seeing where you've come from. Yeah. Like how it all kind of stacks up. Mm -hmm. It may like direct you. Yeah. And or it may kind of create something, you know, as a new idea. Mm -hmm. So I think that that idea, like I don't look back too often. So I'm kind of like a hypocrite. <laughs> Me <laughs> like, neither. Uh, Just because it's so cringeworthy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't have time for it honestly <laughs> like i've been trying to do like throwbacks now yeah this is really interesting it is really interesting like yeah. i just pulled up like a j cole his birthday as i posted like a j cole an old photo man, what a guy he was like the coolest guy man because i didn't even know who he was you know i was hanging out with santi gold at this gig for colhan our yeah. people yeah and uh she had you know a few people backstage it was a good vibe and he was one of them and i just like ended up chatting with him for like 10 10 15 minutes mm -hmm. like just real like like I said, that human kind of connection, yeah, human spirit is a great way to go. Is if you're trying to do people photography, mm -hmm. like don't forget that. Yeah, they're like, human. They're human. <laughs> you know, <laughs> capture that. Yeah, yeah, because they'll allow you. Yeah, maybe after that, you know, to just like he was just hanging out, like relax. Reminded me of like Jim Marshall, Janis Joplin photo mm -hmm. with the whiskey. You know, like that. Yeah. Those are all moments I'm like striving to recreate. Yeah, on my own in this modern era. And you don't know who people will be. They may not be famous at all, or, or they may be behind the scenes kind of people, but they're all, you know, good mm -hmm. people. If they're good to you and, you know, you're good to them, it's usually going to lead to good things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? <laughs> there you go, kids. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Be good. Yeah. No, that's a good way to end uh, it. Yeah, no doubt. Well, thank you. You have any last words? Oh, jeez. I don't know. I think that... Um, Working um, in this industry is tough, and I enjoy little moments that you should just always be aware of mm -hmm. that are in front of you or happening. Don't yeah. get jaded. Mm -hmm. That's a bad place to be. Yeah, you're not gonna stay inspired that way. Mm -hmm. You gotta just like smell the roses. Yeah, it's or they don't really smell good. Do they? Smell the, smell something. <laughs> about, just open up your senses, man. You know. <laughs> it's out there yeah, life yeah. is happening it's alive the city is alive i mean find your environment and make the best of it you know mm -hmm. tell your story um connect to people genuinely support your friends i think is a great kind of messaging i mean being able to have seen people come up yeah and their rise and having some part of that mm -hmm. like virgil Still. the other day is like bro we got to do the book mm -hmm. like you've been there since like in trill the t-shirts you yeah. know or the, you know, the gigs and yeah. the slimy you know grimy clubs mm -hmm. that's cool i want to be there for that mm -hmm. you keep doing it i'll keep documenting it you know right. that's the energy i try to have you know i may not always give good advisement yeah but i'm pretty good when i'm there mm -hmm. yeah yeah i gotta call up with john elliott later today i told dude not to even bother with men's fashion he came and his boy aaron my boy aaron who's his business partner they came to me they're like should we even you know, what's up with men's fashion? What do you think about it? It's like five, six years ago, whatever. Uh -huh. I was like, stay away. Yeah. <laughs> but you just, you never know. People right. got their, you know, they're on it. Mm -hmm. But I will try to keep it real with you always. Yeah. So if you're out there and you meet me, you want me to kind of lay it out for you. Right. Like I will. Like I love talking to people. Yeah. 
And I love telling the, like, the kids who were hitting me up like what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Like If you're willing to put the work in, yeah, absolutely, come. There's a place for you at BFA, no doubt. Cool. All right, thank you. All right, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for listening to this insightful episode with the mindful and humble David Pruding of BFA. As always, you can find out more about the show and listen to other episodes at hypebeast.com slash radio. You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. I personally use Anchor FM. Also, leave a comment and tell us what you think of the show and tell a friend about the show. It definitely helps out. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at Jeff Staple. We occasionally answer listener questions on the show. So if you have a question, shoot it over to us at questions at businessofhype.com. The Business of Hype is created in collaboration with Bright Young Things. You can check out their work at byt.nyc. Our director is Daniel Novetta. Our audio engineer is David Rogers Berry. Our associate producers are Sydney Pacumpra and Christina Hong. This episode was recorded at Sibling Rivalry Studio and on location at the Staple headquarters in New York City. I'm Jeff Staple, and you've been listening to The Business of Hype on Hype Radio. 